very quick roof introduction. Then, Good afternoon, everybody in Franklin Village. It's great to be with you. I'm Clarence Das, and I am a candidate for Oakland County Circuit Court Judge, but today I'm a moderator for this wonderful event uh, to give you a chance to meet your candidates uh, for your local council here uh, in the Village of Franklin. So I'm going to have each candidate introduce himself and herself, and then we'll go into questions. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Hinky, uh, candidate for Franklin Bills Council Trustee. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Michael Seltzer, uh, candidate for re-election for what I hope will be my fourth term as Franklin Bills Trustee. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Fred Delash. I'm running for another term as trustee. And I hope everybody will support me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, this is Pam Hansen. I am running at, for re election as a write in candidate for village president. The way we're going to do this is I'm going to call candidates up, ask them a series of questions. They'll be the same questions generally for everybody. Um, and then I'll give the mic to you to answer the questions and, and just repeat that for each candidate. So first, we're going to start with Fred Galash. And Fred can come on up here. And uh, the first question is going to be, everyone is aware of a recent judgment that the village council did not adhere to the village charter when it approved the plan for sidewalk on Franklin Road. Did you support the streetscape project? And on what basis do you believe the plan for sidewalks did or did not violate the village charter? Well, first of all, since the judge ruled that it did violate the charter, I would assume that's the answer. Secondly, I do support improving mobility throughout the village. We better be careful about our storage significance as well. Next question for Mr. Galash and moving forward. What type of connectivity or pathways do you support, if any? And where would it extend to and how would it be paid for? Well, a few years ago, we had our planning commission put together a plan to put in pathways to the village. And we said to the villagers to vote on it, and they turned it down. So I think the thing should be done again. It's put together, and it doesn't always have to be concrete and stuff, including pathways. Track, uh, bike trails, because they don't have to be just concrete all the time. Let's put together a proposal, determine which are the best roads to put them in. Then the proposal would also include a cost estimate. And then we would go to the public and say, first of all, is it okay to put sidewalk in residential areas? The second question is, will you support this plan? And then we just support it by funding it through a millage. As trustee, what are your two biggest achievements to date? Well, one thing I think is I bring reason to the job. Also, I bring intellectual curiosity, and I have a long history, so I can bring the knowledge to every decision that the decision we made in the past. For example, in the past, 2001, and I have my copy over there if you'd like to see it, the village sponsored a water study, and in the water study, we looked at quality, quantity around the village, all around the village, and then we put a proposal together and said, okay, given this data, does the public want public water? At that time, they said no. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's tell everybody, we all are working with limited knowledge. Let's get smarter. Let's get the villagers smarter, ourselves smarter, then put together a proposal and say, okay, do you want water? Vote yes or no. Okay, if you want water, guess what? It's going to cost this many millions of dollars, and we need this much funding to do it. We want to fund something. If you do, then let's do it in stages and get it done. The council elected to represent villagers on issues that entire village faces. What issues do you believe should be decided on in a voter referendum versus those the council should vote on as representatives of those villagers? I think a lot of people don't understand that the village is a business. 
We have employees, we have pension plans, we have health care. So we have to run this as a business. So we have to worry about those kind of expenditures. What's it cost to clear the snow, all those kinds of things. So we need to run it like a business. In addition to that, we have issues that come up, and that's when council needs to work together, hopefully, to see how what are the right solutions for those, and then go to the public. I'm of the mind that if we have any non-ordinary expenditures, then we should ask the public about it. The demographics in Franklin have been changing in recent years. How will you work to retain, to retain the historic charm of the village, yet also meet the needs of the younger families moving into Franklin who have different needs or wants than those who have lived here for decades? First of all, I think that question is a little bit unfair. Everybody who moved into this village did so knowing what they had. They bought their homes, they liked the homes, they liked the environment, and in most cases, they knew they had what was well order, so they obviously made the decision to still move into the village. I think that we should allow people again to speak up. We need to do more, we council, do more communicating with people. And on the big items, we should ask people to vote on. Last question is, what is your favorite spot in Franklin and why? That's an easy one for me. It's the Franklin Grill. I'm sorry. That's not the only place. <laughs> and and I, I, during the good days, I'm typically there six or seven times a month. Not so now, but particularly now. So, thank you. Next up, we're going to have Mike Seltzer, but I should clarify, I should have probably done this at the beginning, but because I'm a candidate for judge, I'm actually not affiliated with any candidate. In fact, this is the first time I'm meeting any of these people today. I don't even know half the issues that, that we're talking about today, but I'm learning myself because I'm a neighbor. I live in Bluefield Township. We're right on 14 Mile uh, and uh, Telegraph myself. So uh, I'm here to learn just like everybody else. But now we're going to have Mike Seltzer, and uh, I'm going to ask him the same question, starting with... Uh, Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, everyone's aware of the recent judgment that the village council, uh, where they did not adhere to the village charter, would have approved a plan for sidewalks in Franklin Road. Do you support that project? And on what basis uh, do you believe the plan for sidewalks did or did not violate the charter? That is an excellent question, and you're doing a fine job. Thank you very much for facilitating this. Um, I, I believe strongly in connectivity in the community of Franklin. I am a historic preservationist. I live in an 1840s home. So I understand the many people in the community that came to Franklin with preconceived notions that this is our rural oasis and we should leave it just as it is. I just don't completely agree with that because we have so many young new families that have moved here and particularly in the last 10 years, so many people have come into the village that may have had a notion of what Franklin was, but their needs are different than my needs and our needs as a community. So over the, a two year period, we began developing this streetscape plan. And the idea straightforward was we wanted to provide connectivity for villagers to be able to access these beautiful grounds that we're on right now, this gazebo, these baseball fields, the tennis courts, our great library, which has just expanded. We want everyone to be able to enjoy those amenities. And so we developed this plan and we worked within the guidelines that were provided to us. And we took input from dozens and dozens of villagers over the course of a two year period. This was not some, something that we created in the, in the dark of night. We did this over a two year period and we listened intently and we got legal advice. Our village attorney, who is a specialist in this, uh, told us emphatically that we had the right to do what we were doing. Now, we didn't ask for any additional money. We wisely managed the development of our roads, which we do every 15 to 20 years. We came under budget, significantly under budget, because of good engineering and because of timing. And so we decided to use that money to enhance and beautify our downtown Franklin. And along the way, we had 
uh, some obstacles. We dealt with the people that lived on the village right away, and we tried to compromise with those people and provide them some safety and assurances that we were going to work with them. So any notion that we did not compromise is absolute nonsense. In any event, we got sued, and a judge viewed the issue, and the judge has a different view, and we respect that. So we're moving forward in the areas that we can, and now we're taking this issue to the voters. There will be a ballot issue, and everyone will be able to opine by a vote as to whether we want to provide sidewalk connectivity all throughout Franklin Road, just Franklin Road, not the village of Franklin. So let's be clear, this is only on Franklin Road. And that issue is going to go before voters next May. And I look forward to that. That will address this firmly and finally, and I will accept whatever decision the villagers make. You kind of touched on this next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, what type of pathways do you support, if any, and uh, where would they extend to and how would they pay for it? I, I think I warned you that I'm a little wordy and it's hard for me to, to keep myself to two minutes or whatever we're supposed to be keeping ourselves to. So yes, I completely support uh, the connectivity. I have established that. And I uh, re repeat the question. I'm sorry. Where would they extend to oh. and how would it be paid for? Yeah. We aren't asking for any money. We have the money within our budget. So this is not an issue of finance or economics. And they will extend exactly as they were described in the many meetings that we held, in which 80% of the community voiced significant appreciation and support for it. Franklin Road, between 13 and 14 mile road. That's it, at the moment. Now, there may be some discussion down the road for extending that beyond 13 mile road and perhaps on 13 mile road, but that's a, an issue for another day. As trustee, what are your, what do you consider to be your most significant achievements to date? And I may have said two, but two achievements are what we're gonna limit it to. How much time do we have? Um, you know, I came from our Franklin Community Association where I spent uh, 11 years as the president. I'm particularly interested in social activity. I'm a social person. I love people. I love to get around and meet people. So I spent a better part of my career in the village being involved with the Franklin Community Association. Uh, so I bring that to council. When council asked me to join, it was a big decision for me because I was enjoying myself doing all the fun things, our roundup, our music, and our movies, and our Franklinite frenzies, and all the crazy stuff that we do, our wine tasting. Um, among my achievements are bringing that level of enthusiasm. I'm a big cheerleader for our community. I appreciate and I love this community, and I always will love it. Uh, I'm a businessman. I come with 40 years of business experience, and I owned a very successful international marketing company. So I bring that business and marketing experience to the council, and I hope that people recognize and appreciate that those are the things that I consider to be additional attributes. I understand the economics. I ran a business successfully for 40 years, and as someone else opined, this is a, a business. Running the village of Franklin is absolutely a business, and we take that very seriously. We manage it like it were our own, and we manage it efficiently and effectively, and I'm proud of that. What issues do you believe uh, should be decided in a voter referendum versus having the council voting the representatives of the villagers? So the council meets once a month for usually about two hours. Now in the Zoom era, that's expanded to five hours because people are sitting at home and they're questioning us. And we have 90 people in queue that want to speak to us. But in a typical village council meeting, we have a handful, maybe two handfuls of people that are there for very perfunctory things that we do. Approvals, permits, expansions of their homes, they want to build a pool, et cetera. Um, so much of what we do is, as described previously, running a business, and it's, it's approving our treasurer's uh, uh, update and report, uh, approving a bills list, and, and very perfunctory uh, pedestrian things that have to be done. And we don't think that the 3,000 voters in the community want to come to each monthly meeting and vote on those things. The things that I think are important that need to be voted on are big things, like water like sidewalks and i'm a big proponent and if you look at the history of my experience in this community 
Those are the issues that I have always discussed as being those issues that need to be established and determined by the voters. We had a water issue last year, a slight contamination issue in the downtown area, and we had an opportunity to lay a pipe in the ground while we were going to be renovating Franklin Road for the first time in the next 15 to 20 years. It made sense to me to be proactive and to lay that pipe in the ground. It was not a significant expense, and our engineers told us that if we have to do this in the future, it'll cost us a quarter of a million dollars to tear up Franklin Road again. It seemed to be a logical thing to do at that time. So we brought that forward. We agreed on ballot language. And then uh, if you take a look at the minutes, you'll see that we got signed in a second reading of that ballot issue. And that vote was, net was, uh, uh, term was not approved. Unfortunately, that was a timing issue. We had two days to get that ballot approved for the November ballot. And we lost that timing. And now, of course, Franklin Road is under construction. So it's moved, but it's going to be coming back around for people to consider because there are people in this community that have had well water issues and have potential contamination issues. I believe in being proactive and not reactive. How will you work to retain the unique historic charm of the village while also meeting the needs of your families who have different needs than those who have lived here for decades? Well, as I've already said, I am a preservationist. I live in an 1840s house. I'm proud of that. And I support preservation. I support the historic significance of our community. But time marches on. And we have seen lots of changes over the past 10, 15 years. Lots of new young families. When I go and I visit people on streets that are disconnected from the community, I see people that are frustrated because they want to enjoy all the amenities that we have in the village of Franklin. And it's unsafe for them to do so and to force them to drive their way from near 13 Mile to get here to this village green or to get to the cider mill or to get to the Franklin Grill is really unfair. So I believe that that kind of connectivity is important to the community and I support that in its entirety. And last, my favorite question, what is your favorite spot in Franklin and why? Well, it's the dry cleaners, because she can't figure out how to launder my fancy shirts. She says to me all the time, where do you get your clothes, and how can I charge you for these? Because they got all kinds of buttons and appellates and all these weird things. But seriously, it's the Franklin Grill. I love the Franklin Grill. Who wouldn't love the Franklin Grill? And I also love the Franklin Boutique and Terry Cooper. And I love all of our retail business. Business is really important in the village of Franklin. I am very supportive and pro-business, and everything that we do on council is designed and dedicated towards that. I'm a huge supporter of Main Street. Main Street is the conduit that works with our retail environment, and now more than ever, we need retail support. We need Franklin villagers to step up and, and visit those retailers. We have six vacancies that we need to fill. So we're going to have that streetscape plan completed. It's going to look beautiful. People are going to be proud. And we're going to have a better opportunity to market our village, uh, our retail environment, our business district. And I look forward to that as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. We are now going to uh, hear from Mark Hankey, who's a non-incumbent. I know what that's like, because I'm a non-incumbent. It's a unique position to be in until you're an incumbent. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Mark, the following question, starting with this one. What are two of your most tangible accomplishments vis-a-vis -vis the Franklin community? Thank you, Clarence Bud. Uh, again, Mark Hinkey, non-incumbent, running from our first time as Franklin Village Council Trustee. I've lived here for 20 years. I've started three successful businesses here. So I've been with the Franklin community a long time. And, you know, a few things that I've done, really about community service. The Boy Scouts, I'm a big supporter of Boy Scouts. Myself, I'm an Eagle Scout. Um, my son just did his Eagle project. So when we talk about community service, this very gazebo we're standing on, we painted and fixed all this wood, rebuilt all these stairs. As we, my, myself, my son, and his other Scouts. So literally what we're standing on today is one of those projects we did. Now the Scouts, they do lots of service projects. There's probably not a corner of this green that we've not done a service project for either my Scout or my son. Um, or, or other scouts in there. So this is like one tangible thing. We, all this time we able to do this. And it was literally October of last year that we did this. The second thing I, the second thing I would add is if you look over to the brick barn building where the scouts keep their supplies, 
There's a red trailer there. Now, my dad was my scoutmaster when I grew up. And when he passed away, I donated that trailer to the scouts in his memory. Because that's a good 60-foot trailer. They need a new trailer to go camping. So in his memory, I donated that. And you'll see all the names of every Eagle Scout that the Franklin Troop has graduated. So there's your students. I have 10 more things, but I'll start with, I'll stop those two. Thankfully, we have more questions. Uh, what type of connectivity or pathways do you support, if any, and where do you think they should extend to? How would they be paid for? And why are they important? Thank you, Clarence. So connectivity, walkability, rivalability. Anybody who's lived in this village for any amount of time realizes pretty quickly we have landlocked streets. There are folks who move to the village and they don't have a way for them to walk, to ride, to cycle with their kids. The world are strollers downtown. There are landlocked streets along Telegraph Road. There's landlocked streets along Inkster. There's landlocked streets along 13 Mile Road. And they have every right and an honest desire to, to enjoy the village as everybody else does. So uh, I totally support their needs as I I've been riding around every Franklinville Street prior to the election. And the folks I talked to south of 13 Mile, a sidewalk along 13 Mile, that is their number one issue to a person. So many people have said this really matters to us. And I, I learned that because I went out there and, and met them, right? That's the only way you can actually learn. Um, so that is, Michael had said, uh, the current ballot is for something specific along Franklin Road. I support that. We have to include our friends, neighbors, South of 13 Mile in Manor City. So I hope when I get elected that we put that on the ticket in some manner. What issues do you believe should be uh, voted on by voter referendum versus things that the council should vote on? Excellent. Voter referendum, ballot language, or normal mundane business that happens in the village council. As Michael had said, most of the village council meetings are not that exciting stuff. It's, you know, how do we you know, deal with normal expenses, go through you know, police affairs, go through fire affairs. Uh, most of the stuff is normal, relatively boring you know, information. So that's, that's the easy stuff. The hard stuff is meeting the needs of our villagers, right? So when we talk about municipal water, this is a big deal. So that kind of initiative that is a sea change for the Franklin Village, that needs to be brought to the voters. Now, Fred had said something about, about water language. So there's two things we got to remember. Back in the 1990s, Oakland County came to Franklin Village insisting that we install municipal water and city sewers. They offered at the time to pay for 95% of those costs. People at the time, you know, running the village council, they turned it down. 95% of the cost, we had entire villages, city water and city sewers got turned down because there are folks against that kind of change. We wasted the goal and opportunity. So when we think about municipal water in the future, you can write ballot language that makes something so cost prohibitive, everybody's gonna say no. We need to find a way to meet the needs of our, of our residents, of our, of, of our villagers, that works and not just write it in such a manner that everybody would say no to. So you can do either way, but if you want a successful program, there is a way to do it. So that kind of program should be brought to the voters in a cost-effective way. It does not have to be all at once. Every single no. We have residents south of 13 Mile. I've met them. Now, when they moved into the house, they knew it had well water, but they didn't know that their wells are running dry. Literally, there are people in the village who have to manage their daily usage of water. They have no option. And what's that doing to their home prices? What's that doing to the neighbors around them, right? So if, if you were in the situation that you had to monitor your daily usage of water, you would hope that Franklin Village Council would act upon that and help you out. And we need to help them. We've talked today about the historic nature of Franklin. Uh, I'll ask the same question I ask everybody else. How would you work to retain the historic charm of the village while still accommodating newcomers to the village and people of different needs? Excellent. Ma maintain the historic nature of Franklin Village. People in Franklin Village residents, they adore how this village has been set up. Um, Ten years ago, 
One business since I started here was Farmhouse Coffin Ice Cream, my wife. I worked hand in hand with the Historic District Commission to make sure that everything they wanted to do in terms of keeping that look of that building to store, we made those windows by hand, we had buy them from Lowe's to make sure it fit the profile of this historic commission. We made sure that the paint we used was the right kind of paint for the district. And we went back to old photographs going back, you know, 60 years to make sure that this is how that house, that farmhouse coffee looked 60 years ago when it was actually a house. So, so I have literally done this myself in person, made sure that uh, what we're doing in the village maintains that historic charm. What do you believe the council should do or need to do, needs to do to bring businesses to downtown Franklin? And what type of businesses do you think would be uh, viable here? Great question, great question. Talking about businesses that we need here in Franklin. Now, everybody in Franklin knows that there's been a very sad loss of two key businesses here, right? And we only have 33 places for business to open anyway. So every single one matters. We can't afford to lose anyone's business unnecessarily, right? So the reason is why Farmhouse Coffee got pushed out from the landlord, the reason why Market Basket got, got pushed out. Um, we need to make sure that between Main Street, the Village Council, and the residents, we work as hard as possible to help them. Every landlord-tenant relationship matters. They got pushed out because of bad emotions, bad dealings between landlord and tenant. Those could have been saved. I wish we had saved them. Um, to save them. Businesses we need to bring back. We need, we literally need to bring back another version of Market Basket. And, you know, a coffee shop, an ice cream shop, that works. It was literally a social center of the village. I met people who moved here because they could go and do these things. It helped do, you know, seal the charm of it. We took the library between Franklin Grill, between the coffee shop uh, for ice cream and coffee and the Market Basket. That made this village a village. So we need to very smartly encourage uh, those kind of businesses coming. If you outreach to entrepreneurs who want to do that, work with them on building out, work with them on the vacancies and the buildings that are here, and, and build that social center back in front. And the toughest question of them all, what is your favorite place in Franklin and why? <laughs> all, right. all right, so it's the, the, the the favorite places so far has been Franklin Grill twice. Uh, I'm going to go with Franklin Green in the sledding hill and the softball field. So the times I take my kids here sledding down, sledding down the hill, and it is pretty darn fast in the wintertime. And I've spent so many afternoons here watching my daughter play softball on these fields right behind me. So this is, this is definitely my favorite spot right here in Franklin Green. Thank you, Mark Hankey. And finally, we are going to hear from Pam Hansen, who is a write-in candidate for president. Uh, Pam, welcome. Uh, you were familiar with the judgment that we talked about with the village council, where the, you know the judgment said that the, court, the, the council did not adhere to the charter when it approved the plan for sidewalks. Do you support the streets, streetscape project, and on what basis do you believe uh, the plan for sidewalks did or did not violate the charter? Thank you, everybody. Pam Hansen, I'm running as a write in this time for village president. Um, the, the first question is an interesting question, and I think there's an implication when it's worded that we acted illegally. We didn't. Um, we got advice for our attorneys. Uh, there had been a conversation in the village for 20, 40 years about can we, can the village construct sidewalks or can't the village construct sidewalks? It was, in my mind, almost inevitable that this had to go to a judge because um, we were advised, and I agree with that advice, council agreed with the advice, that um, uh, we weren't in violation of the charter. The judgment rule is that we were. And so now what we're gonna do is go to the voters. And, and it should settle the matter, as several of my colleagues um, have uh, stated. I'm absolutely a supporter of the streetscape um, it, it uh, can, for those of you who've lived here for a while, think about what you've observed in the village over the last 20 years. Who are new to the village, um, you may look at the downtown and see old buildings in various stages of perfect re, uh, 
of care and other buildings are deteriorating. Uh, it was clear to me that, um, uh, that instead of just talking about the shabbiness in our downtown and kind of all sitting around the council table, not yet, it's shabby already, we needed to do something about it. And that something was to embark on a project uh, over two years ago that resulted in the construction that's going on in the, in the village right now. Um, uh, it started out with a citizens group, a group of uh, seven residents, uh, including business owners. Uh, no council members were invited to that. That was a resolution that we presented to the council in 2018 that they agreed to. Uh, we wanted to start out with what were the views of the people who lived there and who did business there? What did they see was important? That was a starting point. Over a period of several months, once council jumped in, we had three iterations of this plan uh, and, and the final one was, was implemented. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed in the judge's ruling, but honestly, um, if, the, if the right answer is to go to the voters and that we have clarification on what a residential area really is, um, I'm fine with it. We have, and, and that's what it is. What I think people don't know is that I think is also disappointing is the impact of that ruling was not only that we can't build any walkways um, down Franklin Road, we also can't do it on 13 Mile Road because the judge's definition includes any land adjoining a road in the village, major or not, um, that, that is abutted by private property. So you can ask yourself, how do you want to handle 13 Mile Road down the way? We have successfully over the years isolated families who live south of the thousand voters who live south of 13 mile and we now have another barrier to getting a permission uh, to to make it easy for those folks to get into the village by means other than a car so those are my feelings about it I, I feel very confident that we proceeded legally and diligently to to um, uh, proceed with the streetscape plan you know, we lost a little time, but you know what? We have um, we have a framework to go forward, and I'm really looking forward. I'm no longer looking backwards. So yeah, I'm a supporter. Since you already just said that, I'm not going to ask you whether you support pathways and things like that. But I'm going to move to the next question, which is what do you consider to be your two biggest achievements vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Franklin Village? <clears throat> Thank you. I've been on the council since 2012. To, since 2016, I'm, I, I was president. I think my two biggest contributions is to start changing the conversation about investment in the village. You know, uh, for years and years, we had a, um, a mindset in the village council. Uh, when I watched the council, like you all do, um, no taxes, keep taxes low, never, never levy the maximum millage. We still don't, by the way, but um, and that's a choice. But, but over the years, my observation is that the village deteriorated for lack of investment. And, and I think my contribution is putting the conversation about making this a beautiful village and maintaining our buildings back on the table. I think the other thing um, I did was support the business community. Historically, the, your, your, the village leadership has, drawn a, has had a firewall between um, the business community and the residents. Uh, my feeling is that, that those two are inextricably combined. Healthy downtown is healthy neighborhoods and increasing property values. So I think pulling those two uh, big ideas forward is what I contributed. First female president. And uh, Mark and Tom will be next two of the first female president. I just thought I'd put that in the microphone. What issues do you believe should be decided via a referendum by voters versus the council? I think that's a wonderful question. Uh, so one thing, our charter frames up the decisions that must go to the voters and decisions that go, that are retained by the, the representatives that were elected to uh, operate the village in leadership roles. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit different tack than I think my colleagues have taken on this and say, um, I, I'm, I feel very comfortable uh, with the decision making that the village council has. The village council by charter can't do things like buy and sell property without going to the voters. You, 
you can't issue liquor licenses. You can't make purchases over a certain dollar amount without going to the voters. We recently went to the voters, asked for a permission to install a lighting system in the village. They agreed. We recently went to the voters to uh, change the way we deal with the village clerk, and this time the voters agreed with that. I have no problems going to the voters with um, big questions at all, um, but, but I think there's something else in play here, and that is that the trustees on our village council have a responsibility to know what the villagers think. They need to walk and talk with them. They need to, to bring their own skills and talents to the, to the decision-making process. But I really expect council members, and I expect myself, to understand what the sentiments in the village are and to, and to um, find a way to, to build solutions for village, villagers that represent the interests of the, of the villagers themselves. How do you plan on, uh, as we've been talking about the uniqueness of Franklin, how do you plan on preserving that, that historical nature while accommodating and adjusting to uh, new families coming into the uh, Franklin village? Um, that's a great one too. Um, so here's, here's my thoughts. The first one is that the worst thing we can do is pit newcomers against people who've lived here for a while. People move here because it's a historic village. They like the ambiance of the village. There is no conflict between young and old, new and legacy villagers. Um, but um, what do we do about that? And I think what we need to do is, is engage new residents in the importance of preserving our village structures and keeping them in good shape and funding the Franklin Community Association, the opportunities that, or rather the institutions in the village that make it what it is. I just don't see a conflict um, there. Every young person I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot of them in the last six months, is really willing to sign up to, this is a great historic village in which they can um, uh, raise their families. And that's what I want to focus on. And finally, what is your favorite spot in Franklin and why? Okay. Um, that was actually uh, not a hard question for me. Um, uh, I like a spot up on the hill in the cemetery overlooking the village ballparks. It's peaceful there and you can look down on the ball fields, you can look down on the church and the village green and see and get a sense of what the village is about. So when I need a little peace and quiet, um, in addition to my backyard, that's where I would head. Thank you. Oh, I have one other thing. Oh, okay. Are you done? I'm done. I have something to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that looks like it wraps up our program today, but you know, I'm going to take advantage of my uh, space in front of the microphone and ask this candidate for judge to tell us a little bit about himself. And uh, I'd like a couple questions I'd like to ask. Are you ready? I was born ready. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> First of all, thank you for having me and including me, the planners of this event, Angelina and everybody. Uh, it's, it's all politics is local. I love coming to the 60 plus communities in Oakland County, even though this one is literally a walk from my house. Um, I'm running for Sixth Circuit Court Judge, which is where 1200 North Telegraph is in Oakland County. It's the, it's the highest court in Oakland County, where felony criminal cases, divorces, probate matters, and lawsuits over $25,000 are heard. I served as a prosecutor in Oakland County for five years in the Special Victims Unit, where I prosecuted the most serious crimes in the county, everything from child abuse and elder abuse to rape and murder. Since then, I started my own law firm in 2016, where I've been managing that representing people with mental health issues and drug addictions and all kinds of things that plague uh, them and get them in the system. I'm a cancer survivor, which I talk about very frequently on the campaign trail, a first generation American, and I'm married to a beautiful person named Renee, who's a pediatrician at Children's Hospital of Michigan. So I hope that's a good summary. Thank you very much. Um, if you were elected judge, um, how would you change the courts? 
I actually didn't expect all of this to happen, so, but I'm glad it did. Um, if I had the honor of serving in this position, which I consider, you know, one of the most noble positions in our country, uh, I have a lot of things that I'd like to do while still preserving the unique historic nature of uh, the We don't need people coming into the courthouse every single day over and over and over again. And finally, I believe in something that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Michigan has really promoted, which is uh, providing equal access to the courts. I want every Bloomfield, sorry, we're in Franklin right now. I want every <laughs> township library and every city library to be able to get people access, access, access to legal resources, information so they can watch court without having to go there and providing people information about how they can represent themselves to not everyone can afford an attorney. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you for coming and, and putting up with my spontaneous questions. So thank you very much. And thanks everybody for coming. What? Oh, I'm sorry. What's your favorite spot in Franklin? I'm going to give the easy one, which is the cider mill, but I'll tell you why. It's got significance to me. Oh, is that a Franklin? No. You see how new I am. Um, I have, I've committed a sin because I haven't been to the Franklin Grill. I'm going to now after hearing all this. Uh, so I will say this place right here, because it's a, really a beautiful landscape. Um, it reminds me of being, you know, the countryside in, in the United States. Um, but since the, the Slater Mill is not in Franklin, this is a wonderful place. And we'll be back here again, hopefully after the election too. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Excellent, you guys. Excellent. Well, educate me a little bit because I probably could have prepared more, but of course my